Hey everyone, I'm Evgeny and welcome to the first video in our Spring AI Mastery hands-on guide for developers. Whew. I wonder just how many people watching this actually thought you could use OpenAI for free with Spring AI. Like, I don't know, Spring Foundation paid for lifetime access for everyone. Just the same like first-gen Teslas, right? Yeah, it's reality, man. So, why Spring AI? Well, if you're a backend developer working with AI, your go-to tools have probably been Python and libraries like uh, Longchain or Llama Index. But what about Java developers? It kind of felt like we were left out, right? And until recently, that was pretty much the case. But now, Spring is back in the game with its new library, Spring AI. Yeah, cause once you learn Spring, you know, uh, you just stick with it forever. It's like a developer's life philosophy. Why try anything else? I don't know. In this video, we'll keep the focus on the technical capabilities of Spring AI and we'll not dive too deeply into LM concepts themselves. So, if while watching this you feel like something of the concepts are slipping past you or things aren't clear on a conceptual level, I highly recommend you checking out the AI for Developers 101 course on the same channel. And in this series, we break down the LLMs step by step, starting from the basics and building up to uh, more complex ideas, and all everything in very plain language. So, if you are feeling unsure about any concepts, any words, something not clear, then definitely give that a watch. I will include the links to this course in the description to this video. And today, we are going to start with a super simple example, just to get our feet wet. Well, we'll look at how the integration between Spring AI and an LLM works. And we'll be using OpenAI as, uh, uh, an, as our example. So here's what we'll do. We'll be the basic web server with a single entry point. And when we call that endpoint, the app will send the input directly to OpenAI and return back whatever OpenAI sends us. So, as you can see, no extra processing, nothing fancy, just a straightforward setup to get a feed for how Spring AI and an LLM can work together. Oh man, what do you mean but get your feet wet? We are developers, we get our hands wet, hands not feet. Man, what kind of nonsense is that? All right, enough talk. Let's dive into the code. I've already set up a basic project using Spring Boot, so let's take a look at what we've got. And first, the dependencies. Let's head over to our pom file and here, uh, what we have, we are using Spring Boot Starter Parent as our parent pom, and the version of the Spring Boot Starter Parent is 3.3.4, which is the last one at the time of recording. What else? We have the standard uh, actuator and Spring Boot Starter Test for monitoring and testing. And since we are building a web server, we can't go without Spring Boot uh, Starter Web. And that's pretty much it for the main dependencies. Now, let me show you what else I've set up for you. So, what we have here, we have here a main class for application, and this is a Spring Boot application. And we have a, an API controller that uh, if you can see, it takes the prompt and uh, prompt is just a message, a uh, row string, and it just simply returns uh, what it's got back to the caller. And we are pretending some intelligence here, so we, uh, uh, we are returning this as a completion and we are saying, okay, your prompt is and exactly the string that was passed us as a parameter. And maybe one remark for those of you who want to dive deeper into how to set up a Spring Spring application, like uh, what are those annotations, what they mean, and how to apply them correctly, I've got a few book recommendations about that. So you'll find the links in the description. And we are going further, and we'll be doing, we'll be going step by step. So before we continue, Let's run this application and make sure everything is working fine and our simple, kind of simple, static JSON response should be returned to anyone who requests it. For running the application, I'll use run debug configuration in IntelliJ IDEA. So let's do it right now. I have it already configured here. All right. And 
everything looks fine, like the application is up and running, we are ready to start. But maybe before we start, uh, let's double check just to be sure uh, that our server is really returning us something. Uh, in general, we could use curl for this, but uh, I will just trigger the request directly from IntelliJ ID. So uh, let, let me create the And I'm going to copy paste the whole request from my notes to save our time. So what we have here, uh, we are triggering the localhost 8080 port. We have this slash EI reality check, which is the same as we have in our controller. And we are providing again the prompt, uh, which has only one single parameter message. And we are trying to, to, to be on a intelligent side here, like predicting we are, con we are in a conversation already with EI. So let's see how it goes. And here we are, we have the completion and it says your request is, and then it just copy paste whatever we sent to it. All right, everything looks good. And we have the expected JSON response. Now let's move to the AI part. So uh, when we are working with Spring AI, there is so-called uh, Spring AI bill of materials or BOM. And these things helps manage the versions of all the dependencies in your project related to Spring AI. It automatically uh, sets the recommended versions for each dependency, so you don't have to worry about picking the right one. And this makes things uh, much easier and ensures you're using stable and tested versions. That's why, it's, uh, why, why I'm saying that, because there is a recommended way to manage your dependencies using Spring AI, and this is adding this uh, Spring BOM file. So let's do it. And again, I'm going to just uh, copy paste this into the code. And here we have it. And now, uh, next, we have to add the dependencies for specific components. And like I mentioned earlier, Spring AI isn't an LLM itself and it doesn't process or generate responses on its turn. It's just a framework that lets uh, you usually integrate third-party AI tools without changing the way how Spring works. Uh, so we need to add the dependency and since we are working with Spring AI, uh, since we are working with OpenAI today as our third-party component, we will add that dependency next. So again, let me just copy paste it from my notes. And the dependency name is, uh, it's org spring work.ei and it's spring AI open AI spring boot starter. And well, that's it for the poem. Now let's dive uh, into the coding and let's create a new bin. We, what we need to create is open AI client. So let's go here. Maybe this time I'm going to type something finally. So let me create this bin for you. And this should be chat client. And it takes a chat client builder. Okay, doesn't know about that. Let's refresh our project. So here we have builder. Well, I think that for our example, we're going to keep it very simple and stick with the default settings. Let's assume that they will just work fine for us, right? So we just return. Ah, here was a good completion. All right, we have the bin. And now we can use this bin in our controller. So let me do it manually again this time. Uh, it's private, final. And also we have to initialize it, right? So we need to have a constructor. All right, and now we are ready to change the body of the method. So what we are doing, we are making a call as the prompt or message we get from the user and we send it directly to OpenAI and see like what it returns to us. So 
let's do it this way. Uh, we have chat client, uh, we have a prompt and we define user. And here we are providing what? No, 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 no. Here we are providing what user send us. And finally, we make a call and get back the response as a row string. Okay, now since we, we've got the client set up, we will start our communication by defining a prompt uh, here. Then we'll pass the message to the method with the name user. And uh, again, we are not going too deep into the structure of the prompt here. Uh, for that, if you're interested, why it says user, what's prompt, what all these things, please check out the AI for Developers 101 course available on this channel. Uh, I will give you the link in the description of that. And but we are continuing, then we're making a call to the client and then we are returning back the content as a row stream. And well, that's basically it. Let's run the app and see what we've got. All right, wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not working. Let's take a look what went wrong. Ah. Here we go. We forgot to set the secret key for OpenAI access. And that makes sense, right? Considering it's a paid service. So we need to set one of those two secret keys or properties. And for those who aren't familiar with this, uh, here how it works. Let me show you. First, you'll need an OpenAI account. You also, you need to add some fans to it. And honestly, five bucks should last you a long time to play around with it. And once you have an account, uh, you go to your OpenAI interface and create a new secret key. So you go to the dashboard and API keys, and then you click on here, and then you type your name, and you create a key. And this is the key you will use for authentication, and you can copy and paste it and make sure to save this information somewhere because once it's generated you won't be able to view it again and the secret key is what we'll use to access the OpenAI API. All right we are back to coding session so we need to send one of those two keys and provide the proper secret key from OpenAI. Let's do this. I will pick uh, that one, the first one and here I will define it. All right, here we are. And by the way, I'll be using a fake key in this example. So if you try to reuse it, well, don't be surprised when it doesn't work for you. All right, we have fixed the issue. So let's go ahead and restart the app and give it another try. And then I go back to my examples, HTTP and trying to make another call to the UI. All right, ta-da, and finally we got the response we were looking for. We have this uh, Python is preferred for AI mainly because of the simplicity and the vast and blah, 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 but this response was generated by, was completely generated by OpenAI. Okay, that was a small example on how to use Spring AI to create intelligent applications. And this is just the beginning. If you don't want to miss upcoming videos about Spring and AI, make sure to subscribe to this channel. And once again, we didn't dive deep into the details of what Spring Boot application is, how we are using the uh, specific annotation or why we're using it. And if you feel that you're missing this information and if you feel that you need to learn about this somehow, uh, I've got some really great book recommendations for that. Uh, I will put all the description, uh, all the links to the books in the description. Please take a look at that. So if you feel something is missing from the very basics of how Spring works, there is good guidance for you in the description. <laughs> and another reminder, if you're unsure uh, about different details about AI, for example, why we called our input a prompt and uh, why we got back a completion, or for example, if you're wondering who user is in the method name, I highly recommend you checking out the AI for Developers 101 course on our channel. In that series, we break down LLM concepts in a very, very simple language, understandable for everyone, step by step, from basics to advanced. Also, I will include links to the description as well. Please, 
Take your watch. And that's all from me, Evgeny. Leave your comments, hit the like button, and let's keep the conversation going. Hey, see what I found a great time player. So give me a like, give me a like, give me a like. <laughs> see it? Oh no, this one. Give me a like. All right, that's it for today. See you all next time. Yeah, they completely forgot about Java developers. Oh, and Kotlin developers and Scala and let's not even mention Groovy. Java's got nothing for you, nothing. Just keep making your stupid plain web services. AI is only for Python. Not anymore, not, not, not. Here's Spring AI for you.